Welcome to the Old Man Orange Podcast. I'm Spencer Scott Holmes. And I'm Ryan Dunnigan. And this is like one of the first times I think I've ever thought about. I'm like, I just like woke up and podcasted. Like literally jumped out of bed. So like turn the computer on and let's start podcasting. I don't think I've ever done that before. We've done it, you know, where it's like late at night or, you know, any other times of the day, but... We've done it like early in the morning, like early, I guess, for us, where, you know, like, we both had somewhere we had to be, so like, meet at my place at 9 o'clock, and we'll just crank this thing out. And the, those ones back when I lived in Sonora were always some of the better ones, but uh, it's, I guess we never really did it that way through Skype or whatever. I think, you know, I think there's one time we did it really early in the morning, because I think we were talking to somebody who was in, U- in the UK, I think maybe we had Ian Brown on, but beyond that, um, yeah. Yeah, well, I mean, those, I think those ones were like early but they weren't like wake up and podcast i think that's the difference you know like those mm-hmm. all those other ones i know for a fact i was for i was awake for like a couple hours beforehand gotcha gotcha yeah this one was just like it takes like hey when you want to i just text you like when you want to record you're like now like oh shit uh, uh all right <laughs> it was almost kind of like run lola run me getting from like the corner store down the down the street to getting back over here to <laughs> being in the show in time well, it's just one of those ones that's like, oh, doing all this, like, sound and lighting for, like, 14 hours on end. It's just comes to the point, it's like, okay, let's see, I got about this much time on this weekend, let's do it. Yeah, because you're working the town fair or whatever, right? Yeah, and there's just all the bands and stuff, and, you know, they, they need their lighting and sound. Yep. So. And, uh. It's actually like. I remember last time, last time you were at the town fair, you had a couple stories, like. God, this one fucking guy, this one show, I don't fucking get it. Like, how's this guy survive? Is there any of that going on this year? Like, Dude, I don't know what happened. He repeats, that one, like, mean, this you, guy's back? You mean you're talking about the guy on the uh, the unicycle man? I mean, the Hollywood on Wheels guy or whatever. Well, okay, the Hollywood on Wheels guy is actually still there. I saw that guy. Like, for some reason, he, I, mean, I don't know, maybe, I don't know, he was still doing some really goofy, like, skits and so on. I, I, walked, I walked to the restroom once, and he was just over there, just, like, some children just, like, laid down, like, whatever, it's air-conditioned in here, I guess this is the best entertainment. But, but there was a guy who was on the unicycle, it was the weirdest one, because there was a guy on a unicycle, and he was in, like, tie-dye, and this was last year, and he, you know, he would juggle, and then he had, like, a little, like, um, uh, what's, what's the little teeny flute thing called? It's not really even, like... Wouldn't properly be called an instrument, but I guess it still isn't. A kazoo. There we go. Though he was really talented at the kazoo. I'm going to give him credit for that because I remember that there was a band playing and then like it was like a reggae band and he like, you know, pedaled on over on the unicycle and he literally did a solo on his kazoo, like perfectly in sync with the band playing and then pedaled off, you know, juggling and, you know, going, wow, and, you know, yelling his way, which is like the weirdest thing ever. But I just kind of wonder what happened to that guy. Did he just end up in like some... Texas kind of road stop and things just didn't go right. Well, you know if he's good at that kazoo, guy was almost a little too. Something weird. else he's really, must be really good at. <laughs> exactly. Maybe they found him a new job there. Like, boy, you're working out down here at the Texas watering hole. You're gonna be running. You're gonna be running down here. That's what you're gonna do. You know, a bunch of truckers are gonna come in. They're gonna need a boy. Oh, I'm 42. They're gonna need a boy. <laughs> <laughs> oh, I just shave that stubble. Talking a little high-pitched voice, you're the new boy. You're the new boy. That's what you are at nighttime. And during the daytime, you work the glory hole, so nobody can see your ugly mug. Oh, I'm not that ugly. You are in Texas. <laughs> but that doesn't mean nobody the, can get loving at night. Put this... Put, put the, put the, you still will, you still will wear, the, wear the clown nose. That way they can honk something while they get blown. Yeah. I mean, keep the horn. I don't know what it is. Truckers love a horn. <laughs> The little things that get him. Yeah. I remember, like, the weirdest thing, too, is, like, I was just walking around, and then I saw that guy, and he literally had, like, I don't know, there was, like, a female version of himself, like, sitting down there, and they were, like, having lunch. And I didn't know if that was his wife, sister, a clone, I'm not too sure, but... <laughs> <laughs> like maybe that's he what he reproduces wanted. Maybe asexually, like, like clowns reproduce asexually. Like they just <laughs> shit out like a fucking clown nose, and the rest of it grows from there. Yeah, I mean, well, and I guess I guess you could say he's in the clown category. That's probably like when I explained it. it you ride like, a unicycle, play a kazoo. There's a fucking clown. There's where, no way, two ways about where, it. He was more. I guess he was like the hipster clown of them all because he wasn't wearing the makeup or anything like that. That's just a half-ass clown. Yeah, he was more just like. He was like a goofy child entertainer, but you know, yeah, clown. <laughs> yeah, I guess he is totally in the clown category. Well, whatever. There was there was a female version of him, and 
Who knows how that happened? I don't know if that was just an experiment where a scientist was working on things. You know what? I'm going to clone this clown. See what happens. And he's What's like, his science done? And he's, then he just, like, drops him off, like... Just drops him off at, like, a Bailey circus and be like, Yo, get out of here. Run. Get out of here. You don't belong here anymore. But like, I don't want to leave, father. <laughs> you're not You're not my son. You're just a dirty, dirty clone. Just an experiment gone wrong. I didn't expect you to play the kazoo that well. Nobody plays the kazoo that well. You want your kazoo back? Take it! Like, throws the kazoo into the tent. He runs after the kazoo. Then he drives off. <laughs> exactly. He looks in his rear view mirror. He's just, like, unicycling after him. Can't make he, like, it trips out. over a rock and falls face first down. <laughs> he's like, no, don't worry. He's okay. He could survive. Of course it's pouring rain. <laughs> yeah, it's gotta be. Thunder and lightning. <laughs> he pulls the kazoo out and then lightning strikes it. He's like, I knew it probably was a bad idea to get to the metal kazoo. Oh, uh, but, um, I'm just wondering, like, how this day and age, I'm not trying to be a dick, I'm just wondering how those kind of entertain, entertainers get by, really, just because, you know, we're, I mean, we're being kind of, we're being kind of dicks here, we're just shitting on these people, we don't even fucking know, like, <laughs> your life choices, but at the same time, though, it's like, how, is there enough people that go point, like, oh, well, how about that, like, over the age of nine? Well, because this is the weird thing, is the guy on the kazoo is, was, not the guy on the kazoo, the guy on the unicycle. <laughs> It wasn't that old, you know what I mean? He was just probably like a guy. He probably was like twenty-seven or something like that. He was probably like the same age as us around there, give or take. He could be. He could have been thirty-five for all I know. But he he just probably was one of those goofy, like partially retarded. Like I don't mean that like in a negative way, but you know what I mean. Just somebody who was just a little bit off. That's what that guy kind of reminds me of. Where you get the Hollywood on Wheels guy, which probably if you've ever been to a fair, I'm assuming this guy shows up to anything in California, probably Nevada and Arizona and Oregon too. And who knows how far else, because this is probably all this guy has. Now, this guy's old. He's like, you know, 50, 60. So he's probably like, when he started off in the 70s, that was probably a hip thing to do. Let's just say, you know what I mean? Mm-hmm. And then as time has sort of gone on, he's, this, this is the only thing he knows. So that guy, I'll give that guy almost like slightly, a little bit more of the benefit of the doubt. It's almost like he dug himself into like a career path that he can't come back out of. And who knows? Maybe he makes more money than he's like, well, I make more money than working at, like, a restaurant or something like that, so fuck it. I'm gonna still be the Hollywood on Wheels guy and have my cheap, you know, act where, like, 90% of it's all just, like, sound bites that I string together and then do some prop comedy with. Is it one of those things that we just look it up, like, oh, he has, like, more Twitter followers than both of us or something like that? He probably <laughs> does. God, that's an, that's an interesting... Yeah. I never thought about that. God, all the time I'm sitting there, like, you know, if all this time, it's like... I don't know why I never looked at it. Maybe I was afraid to look that guy up and see what was happening. Like, oh, look at this guy, that. like, like, you know, he's just, like, got, like, he's, like, on MTV Cribs. Yeah. <laughs> you know, just He's like, actually just a huge star. I don't know about it. Yeah, it's just, like, you know, he's, like, yeah, he's, like, I just do... It's, like, charity work for me to do, like, the fairs. <laughs> I'm, help, I'm doing this community a favor, all right? They're not doing me a favor. He's, like, technically, long. Carrot Top opens up for me in Las Vegas, just saying. Who do you think taught him everything he knows? <laughs> yeah, maybe he Man, he, he, God, Carrot Top had a great deal until, like, you know, the 1-800-collects, until, like, collect calls are no longer a thing. Well, he had that, but then he was, like, he was, like, master of Las Vegas. That was the weirdest thing. I remember when I went down there for, oh, God, almost, like, 10 years ago, because it was Kyle's 21st birthday, and we were down there in Vegas, and I remember there was just Carrot Top billboards, like, nobody's business, and I was like, Wow, this is so weird. Because he's like, you know what I mean? Like, Carrot Top, you know, in the 90s, you know, this is how I always think about Carrot Top. He had, yeah, he had the commercials, and then he had that one movie where it's called Chairman of the Board, and I remember watching that as a kid. And actually, I actually remember it being funny as a kid, but, you know, when you're six years old, it's probably like an awesome flick, or maybe eight years old, or whenever it came out. But um, I almost kind of want to watch it again. I saw it pop up somewhere. I'm like, oh, we should just watch that again, just for, like, why not? You know, I, I mm-hmm. bet you it'd still be somewhat funny. But, um... Yeah, in Las Vegas, it's so weird how Vegas will do that. They'll take, like, almost kind of, like, C-level, like, celebrities and then, like, blow them out of proportion so they almost become, like, an A-level act. It's the weirdest thing. I don't know what that is. Maybe it's just cheaper to, like, pick those kind of people up and just exploit them than it is to pick up. I mean, obviously, they've had, like, Elton John and some other kind of big ones, but... You know, you mean, think about all those Las Vegas acts. They're mostly, like, you know, I guess you could even say Elvis Presley. Like, when the time they kind of, like, was making Elvis Presley really big in Vegas, it was kind of like, well, this hippie thing's popular now. Well, uh, let's get old Elvis Presley over here. You know, we'll make him big again. People that like cigarettes and smoking and hanging out in bars still like Presley. 
I feel like it's one of those things, it's one of two things. It's either, yeah, taking a B, like a BC level celebrity, pushing up, making them, making them seem like something bigger. Or it's, oh, here's this respected uh, musician or whoever, but they're kind of, uh, they're not on their last legs. They, 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 they're still talented, but it's like, here's kind of like their, uh, their retirement tour. You know what I mean? You come to them. So... Yeah, and it's like, I know from what I've heard from the Carrot Top one, and I remember he was even on, like, a couple Gene Simmons episodes, is that, like, his act actually, like, looked, like, really extremely dialed in. It was just like, huh. It's just one of those ones. Maybe it's just because the novelty of, like, a prop comic, because that's so rare nowadays. And, I, you know, I've never, like, some people, people always go, like, oh, prop comics should just die out with, you know, them and the clown shouldn't be around. But I was kind of going, like, well, you know, I think you could do funny stuff with a prop comedy. You know, I mean, like, there's, there's Gallagher skits that are pretty darn hilarious. Gallagher is someone I never really found that funny. I'll be honest; he's never really jumped out to me. And plus, with him being a crazy like asshole later in life, you find out, oh, you know, fuck him anyway. You know, I don't give a shit. Well, it's like this whole thing. Did you ever watch a stand-up special of Gallagher? I've seen his stand-up specials, and they never really jumped out. I saw one that happened about like probably oh four five years ago and he didn't have any um he didn't have any props or anything like that and he was just doing stand-up and it really felt like a like eighth grade science teacher trying to tell jokes to the class yeah he does kind of have that feeling did you watch any of his ones from like the 80s or 70s i've seen all the ones where he's like smashing shit and making jokes and a lot of it doesn't really jump out and i'm not trying to discredit him i know it was probably revolutionary for the time but he just was never really that funny to me Huh. But, uh, well, it's just one of those ones, like, like I don't know, like, prop comedy always gets kind of, like, a bad rap, and I think you can do it well, but sometimes it's just, like, it's that fine line between what is goofy and what is actually a good joke. Like, mm-hmm. are, are they laughing because they're like, wow, that's kind of goofy and sad, or are they laughing because, oh, that's actually really original, that's a smart thinking idea right there. Mm-hmm. No, I think there's a good way to do prop comedy. Prop comedy's never jumped out of me, but there's probably a good way to do it. Um... I was going to say, uh, I'm just imagining, because, you know, like you said, prop comedy is probably like a dying off art form. So I'm just wondering, like, a uh, there's that scene in Million Dollar Baby where uh, Jennifer, uh, or what's his, what's her name? What's that actress? Uh, uh, the chick. Well, what, the, the chick. Who, that's the chick that's in, like, the Boys Don't Cry movie. I think so, yeah. I almost said Jennifer Garner. She looks kind of like Jennifer Garner, but Schwalbach? Yeah, it's Jennifer definitely Garner? not... Not Schwalbach, no, that's, that's Kevin Smith's that's wife. Kevin Smith's uh, wife. Uh, well, she looks kind of like think, I, don't even, I really don't even think it's a Jennifer, actually, to tell you the truth. Well, whatever her name is, um, she was also the uh, next Karate Kid. Can't forget that. But uh, she... Oh, yeah, that's right. There's the part she's going to Clint Eastwood. He's like, I want you to train me. Like, girl, I can't fight. Da, da, da. You know, <laughs> I'm almost expecting like somebody going up to like an old, jaded, like almost like Clint Eastwood in a <laughs> carrot top wig. Just going like, I want you to be a prop comic. I want you to show me how. Just like, no, there's no time for that. We're dying <laughs> off breed. Oh, God. But they say you're the best. I was... What's the point of being the best when something ain't around no more? <laughs> I would see that movie. That's a movie they should really make. That's a good one right there. Just make a prop comedy guy who's just like bitter and old and be like, yeah, there was a time they appreciated this kind of stuff. But now this is all I know. I ain't training no youngins. <laughs> it could almost be like, I'm not just trying to fuse movies here, but it almost be like kind of like the wrestler of that. You know what I mean? Yeah, you, like, you make it kind of like the wrestler. Like, the guy's like, this I'm really guy was probably like, huge I in the 80s. The kazoo. And ride a unicycle at the same time. It's like, people don't like that kind of talent anymore. They just think you're lame and gay. <laughs> Look at that. They want you. They, they, they ain't laughing with you. They're laughing at you because you're riding a stupid unicycle. Just like fucking kicks it out from underneath him. He falls, <laughs> but like all of a sudden before he hits the ground, he like wheels himself back up. He's like, oh, you do got some talents there. You're like, yeah, this is what I've been doing all my life. No, I never had friends. Yeah, I can tell that. <laughs> you ever just like the dick boy I mean not like because you're gay and you actually liked it because somebody peer pressured you or offered you money oh yeah uh, yeah yeah you know that's what a truck stop's all about that's how you get to the next town they make it to the next state fair <laughs> that's how you get there you know what I mean he's just like oh do I know do sometimes I know? there's a band and they got an extra seat <laughs> <laughs> you don't always get it though sometimes that's for their backpack and you still have to sit on the ground <laughs> yeah they gotta take you along with them but 
<laughs> no, I like the but, idea you know, that he's all like, just the rules of the road. Meet me here at dawn with your unicycle and your kazoo. Oh, you're going to coach me? Like, no. You got an addition. <laughs> we'll find out. <laughs> and then he takes him on the road trip and sees where he goes and how life is. And I don't know. One of those ones where it's like it should have happy moments in it, but then all of a sudden it should just go dark and, I don't know, maybe like he gets like molested by clowns or something. I don't know. That sounds funny. <laughs> Let's not give clowns a bad rap. Clowns always I like get the a bad idea rap. Of clowns... like... Go ahead. <laughs> I, know, I just feel like clowns always get like, clowns are always like the butt end of like any joke or anything like that to the point where it's like, you know, I don't know. For somebody who's trying and doing something in life, I, don't, I feel like you they shouldn't be putting them down too much. You know, I, I just have trouble having too much sympathy for a clown. I don't know what it is. Like, they, they made that choice, you know? I'm not sure if there's, like, some kind of, like, chromosome that makes them, puts them towards that path, something they can't handle. Like, oh, this life chose me! It's one of those things <laughs> I just feel like, you chose to be a clown, all right, man? This shit's on you. Oh, yeah, I'm, I'm not saying it like that, but I'm just thinking, like, everybody's always just, like, so anti-clown, it seems like, in the last, like, 20 years. That sometimes I feel like, well, you know what? I'm going to give clowns a little bit more benefit of the doubt, you know? It's like, you know, they wanted to do comedy. They just, they just wanted to choose a different route, you know? It seems like if you do anything that's outside of stand-up comedy nowadays or, you know, I guess just talking comedy or, you know, things like that, comedy writing, you get, like, ridiculed for trying something different in the comedy genre. It's kind of weird what how it is. Th- I mean, granted, it's old-fashioned. I know that kind of has something to do with it, but... What do you think it is that kind of like put the nail in the coffin for clowns? Do you think it was John Wayne Gacy, Pennywise, Joker, or do you think it started with Gacy and it built up from there? You know, I think there's always just... Because that's another thing I think is kind of exploited, too, is the scary clown thing. And I feel like I've never found a clown scary. Like, and when I watch it, I just I just find it fucking hilarious because it's a clown. He's He's funny. You know what I mean? Like... So, I, I don't know, that, that one's a weird one to me. That's something I just don't get. That's just, like, a weird fear. And I think some people, like, they don't actually have that fear, but they just jump in on the bandwagon and be like, yeah, clowns are scary, you know, let's make clowns scary. And, I don't know, that, that one's such a weird one to me. I know Joker's a clown, but I have trouble thinking of, of him as a clown. I just think of him as what he, you know, because oh, every so often he'll pull out, like, you know, a flower that shoots acid, like, instead of water, the bang gun. But every, most of the time, though, it's like, oh, yeah, that's right, he's a clown, isn't he? I kinda, even though he's called the Clown well, Prince of Crime, I almost think of him more as just, like, um, kind of a serial killer with a, this weird kind of laughing gimmick, you know? Well, you know why? It's because he doesn't look like a clown, really, at the end of the day. It's not like he's got, like, a curly-haired wig on or a red nose or anything like that. He just happens to be a, He's more just a guy with, like, very pale skin and green hair who dresses kind of in, you know, flamboyant kind of colored suits. You know what I mean? Like, when was the last time you saw a clown dress like the Joker? Think about it. Well, like, even... Well, even like, even, like, his more recent... Well, he's more inspired off... I mean, they went the clown thing, but he's more inspired off the silent film, The Man Who Laughs... Yeah. And or the man who smiles, and that was that guy wasn't even the bad guy. That guy was like really the he was a sad guy whose face was structured in a way where he couldn't where he can smile where he could only smile and laugh. People always point. It's one of those like things like it is a really sad, scary concept. But at the same time, when you watch it, it's just like I get it was early acting, but people are just straight out. As soon as this guy walks in the room, people just bust up in laughter. Like, look at him! He looks like a fucking fool. And you just go back to the guy, just like nodding and like, and then like, you know, something like that. And there's the one lady who feels bad for him, of course. It's probably, that probably wasn't over the top acting then. That was, that was just people's reaction when they saw something different. <laughs> they're like, we don't yeah, trust yeah, change. They, they, well, it's just, it's just something funny because they're acting all, they're all just like, you know, it's that weird, like, uh, pace where it's kind of sped up. They're all like turning and looking, nodding at each other. Like, this is acting, 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 acting. And then all of a sudden, he walks in, they'll turn, they'll start slapping their knee, pointing, like tilting their head back. Like, yeah, you can scream as loud as you want. You, dude, you don't actually gotta scream that loud because we can't pick up on you. That's how we're gonna have the black text with the font saying what's going on. So you don't actually have to scream that, are right, you screaming anyway, whatever, fuck it. And um, then though, we, anyway, going back to the point of that though, the way he looked, I could actually definitely see, like, oh, uh, that that movie, I don't remember the actor's name, but that movie, he actually did a look a lot like Joker. So so it's kind of interesting, some of the places where it gets its start, you know? Oh, yeah, totally. And I think, you know, that, that acting back then, they're like, well, shit, we don't have sound. 
fuck, what are we going to do? We'll make the acting just big. You know what I mean? I, it just looks too boring if they're just sitting around just, like, lightly laughing. You know what I mean? Over the top, over the top. And then, you know, you got the guy hand cranking it. So he's like, Bob, you better get those frame rate down. You better get that frame rate down. Damn it, fucking Bob, you sped it up again. We're going to chop your arm off if you can't get it right. <laughs> well, there's also probably another thing of, um... I mean, because I've heard people say they can't watch old silent pictures because they just look so cheesy. But at the same time... I get it. Those early stages of acting and filmmaking, so they got to start somewhere. Yeah, and that's that what one said though. I feel like you got to be into film to like to enjoy silent movies. Silent movies. That's kind of like that's definitely not for everybody. You know, that is only for people who are into <laughs> storytelling and history and movie making and things like that. Though the one thing I've always thought would be kind of a hip thing to do is if you had like a bar and instead of kind of like you know bars have had like you know sports running in the background or they've had. I've seen live concerts and stuff running in the background. I always thought it'd be kind of cool if you just had silent movies running in the background. Mm-hmm. That'd be pretty cool. Yeah. I, I, I guarantee. Actually, you know what? Um, fuck. Uh, not the most masculine thing to say. I one time went to a gay bar with a friend of mine, and they had silent gay movies playing on there, like some old random shit from the <laughs> 50s that you know was probably hard to come by back then. Yeah, exactly. Bro. You know, probably has never left that bar. It's just changed ownerships. <laughs> Well, no, I'm I'm just imagining how hard it was. Well, first off, how hard it probably was to find porn back in those days, and then especially something like, oh, we got some video of some boys sucking each other off. So, and just seeing like some like you know, nineteen, it was silent still. Maybe it was trying to make sure me an artistic choice. But there's some old '30s like gay movie, like some old ni- 1930s gay movie that was silent on the screen. You're just like, oh, how about that? Hmm. It was on a projector, so it really gave the vibe. Yeah. Well, those ones are probably those things you probably just went to, like, those 8 millimeter underground clubs or whatever and, like, pulled that out. And guys like, here you go, here you go. I judge not because I'm selling in an underground club. What, why should I have any morals? Look at me. I'm not even paying taxes. I'm a, exactly. I'm a thief, damn it. Buy your gay porn. Now pay me. Like, oh, this guy pay me. Pay me. Pay me so I can go to hell and die. Oh, jeez, okay. Here you go, sir. Here's a, here's a nickel excited. for your reel. <laughs> He seems especially excited for that last part. <laughs> I'm a bad boy. I'm so very bad. I'm a dirty Give me man. A nickel. Living under a dirty city. Selling a dirty art. I wanted to be somebody, damn it. Oh, great. Here we go. This is, I told you you had to hear his life story. It's just bound to happen. But you got great deals, though. These film deals, you cannot get anywhere else. And the selection? My God. <laughs> but I mean, the snuff probably... films are only 10 cents. Yeah, just one of those places. You know, shit, sometimes he's, you know, sometimes he films it himself. So, you know, you, you get some real authenticity going on. But probably best not to Come talk through his to art. Much. Yeah, the thing is, it's almost kind of like you just got to make it very bare bones. Throw it down and don't ask too many questions. You don't ask, how are you? Trust yeah. me, you'll be there for a while. You say, hello, this one. Get that one. He says, how's your day going? And you say, fine. <laughs> he's going he's gonna to say, fine, how's yours day? Well, my day... First off, my wife did not call me back. Secondly, uh, she took the kids. Thirdly, it just goes on and on and on. Like here we go again, and then next thing you know, he's gonna want to invite you out. Realize the man in the mirror—the man in the mirror—is not the same man he was twenty years ago. Yeah, it's like I even had to break a mirror and get a new mirror, just thinking that might fix it, but it didn't. Didn't do anything actually, you know. It's one of those funhouse mirrors. Yeah, so now the man in the mirror is also like three feet extra wide. And it's not really helping my esteem because now I just look like I weigh 400 pounds every time I look in the mirror. And, you know, I don't think I have double chins, but I don't know. This is the only mirror I could afford, so <laughs> kind of stuck with it now. Uh, yeah, we'll, we'll just take these three reels right here. Uh, oh, yeah, you can have you just just take them. Fuck it. <laughs> awesome. Great. You have a good one. I'll try. Yeah. Huh. I don't know. What's good? What's good anymore? Why? It's like the idea. Like, here's the other thing, though. If you can get him on the right path, if you can get him to be <laughs> self-deprecating enough, he won't care, and you don't have to pay him. It almost <laughs> it almost sort of works in your own favor. So if you could, like, you know, there's certain triggers. Like, he might yabber on or whatever about his third ex-wife or how his kid doesn't call him anymore or whatever or doesn't invite him to Christmas. But if you can get him on just the right path... He'll start talking, having a conversation with himself, and in that, you don't even have to pay. You just, just he just he just doesn't care. You just take the thing, leaves, and he doesn't care. He's like you know ten cents. He lost ten cents, whatever. 
Yeah, but t- ten cents at that time period—that's like ten bucks. Yeah, well, he doesn't give a shit. He's hoping for death right there in that moment. He's yeah. hoping that now you d- his whole collection will just topple on top of him, and he won't be able to breathe anymore, and he'll die there, and what he would consider probably a peaceful death. Here's your interaction with him. You got to give him enough hope to where he keeps on going, but not enough to where he's actually happy. You got to keep it in this point to where maybe today will be better. And you kind of bring his hopes up for a minute, but you don't. You pull away. He says, well, I got a little bit of an interaction. Maybe the next day will be better. Because it's out the minute he offs himself, we lose the spot. All right, man, we lose it. So it's about keeping that happy medium. Well, not happy for him. <laughs> the happy medium for us. Yeah, because we want him to be there the next time we come around. Because, shit, I ain't, I ain't going down to the store to buy these movies. Yeah. So, you know. Do, just make, make eye contact minimal and keep uh, casual human interactions even slightly more minimal. <laughs> yeah, just 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 the bare minimum. That's what you got to do, you know. Kind of stroke him off at Get first his... and then just push him down the well and just enough that he can swim back up. You know, t- like toss a rope and let him climb back up on his own because, damn it, I'm not doing it for him. Get his name wrong a few times, you know. Make it close, though. Not like to, you know, you're trying. Like, say his name is Clarence. Shit, is it Clarence or is it Derek? I don't. Oh, whatever. We'll, we'll call him Clarence. Whatever. Clarence, say, you know, instead of Clarence, call him Clark. One day, you know, some instance CL, something around that area. Call him Cletus the next. You know, just close, but no cigar. He won't correct you. Trust no. me. He doesn't have enough. He doesn't have enough self esteem. You could do it like call him three different names in the same sentence, and he's still not going to correct you. He's literally a man who named his boy Sue because he thought that was a hip name. <laughs> That's also why his son doesn't call him anymore. His son also Sue likes Sue or Stu? No, it's Sue. It's Sue. You know, his son thought, he told, you know, his son thought maybe I should change it to Stu, but he's like, fuck it. I'm going somewhere else. I'm turning into a Frankie. <laughs> Frankie. <laughs> Well, you know, that, that was a hip name at the time, you know, so unlike Sue, Sue didn't really help out. Try to be a kid in the 1930s named Sue. <laughs> a boy, that is. Well, you know, Johnny Cash met him and made a song about him, so. Yeah, exactly. That only made it worse for him. <laughs> you would think having a song My name is Cash. Sue! How do you do? <laughs> You're gonna die! <laughs> uh, See, and That's then he a gets up and then he kind of tries this. No, it is a good song. <laughs> that was like some very he- that was like some flat out metal shit. You know, it's just like, I'm going to I found him and I, I can't remember because one of those songs where he's almost more telling a story than actually rhyming. But he's all like, what happens is like, he says you best thank me for the gravel in the gut and the sore gut, you know, something like that. And he says like, I I knew this world was going to chew you up and spit you out, so I named you Sue. And then he's just like, this day I still hate that name. Damn it. <laughs> Well, it's like old fashioned stuff. Like, I named you Sue to man you up. You know what I mean? A man named Sue can get through life and, you know, do things. He can accomplish anything. <laughs> yeah. Well, th- th- it didn't have the same effect on this Sue. No, unfortunately. It, it really didn't, you know. Now Sue actually stars in his own father's pictures, so that's almost kind of weird in itself, but he needs the money. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Well, I guess that makes it an awkward Christmas, you know? Well, so what'd you do last night? Well, you fucking know. Oh, yeah. You, you, you were, you know, remember you were around the camera? You were spinning the wheel there? You were directing me and yelling at me and telling me how I was such a shitty son in front of everybody else, <laughs> which is all of three people, but that's all we could afford to make this movie, but we all needed the money, so we know we had to do it. You're, you're, you're because such see, a shitty son. Because we all know son. that heroin isn't free. <laughs> you're such a shitty son. Now keep your mouth open so that guy can shit in your mouth. <laughs> Hey, hey, keep going. Hey, keep going. Okay, lightning guy, getting closer. Getting closer. Okay. Shitty son, get in there better. Shit boy, in the mouth. Come on. There you go. Yeah. Shitty Sue, hurry up. My, my name's not Shit Sue, Sue, Dad. It's like, that, that wasn't your goddamn birth name. Boy, that's now, about the only time. Sue. Once he gets behind the camera, he starts to get some fucking balls and get some of that. And then the second he's starting to sell these movies, then he just starts to question life once more. It's one of those things, he's in the moment, he's like, yeah, fuck yeah, fuck yeah. Then all of a sudden, as it gets there, like, shit, what I do, oh what God. I do. That's my own blood relative right there. Like, I can't be, who have I become? Why? Why, God, why? You wouldn't even let me near a church. If I came near it, I would explode into a demon and rape your church and rape all the boys inside. I just know it. I just know it, damn it. He's just like, oh, God. 
He walking down the street saying that? Yeah, yeah, that's him. She's trying to make eye contact. I know. I know we want to kind of keep up the friend appearance because we, we get better discounts that way, but there's a time and a place for that. Just saying. Not in public. <laughs> yeah, not, not in public. God, no. If you're in line at a convenience store, you act like you don't know who that guy is and you just keep walking on. <laughs> This guy, I feel like he's one of those guys who puts out, like, those sex request videos. Just like, hey, if you come on over to my place at, like, 553 Broadrig, you fuck me hard, I'll give a shit. You know, like, you're like one of those guys like, God, things aren't going well for this guy. It was kind of guys like, hey, could you come on over and uh, put the cat ears on and drink some milk and I'll, I'll feed you. And I'll sit here in the dark and watch. <laughs> Do you ever watch, uh, you, you ever see any of Tom Segura's stand-up? Uh, I think I've seen, like, one. He, uh, well, I really like that guy. No, that's, he like, Buddy's a... favorite guy. He always goes off on how amazing his podcast is and everything like that. I listen to his podcast every so often. Um, he has, uh, he does these, ske- he does these moments where he'll, like, he'll play random videos from YouTube and, like, review them. And there's this period where they're just doing these things on, like, uh, people who were putting out sex requests through YouTube. Uh-huh. And... There's this one guy for, he looked, keep in mind when I say this, he looked like an uglier, um, is Ron Jeremy, that's the guy with the massive dick, right? Yeah, the guy who looks like a Mario. Yeah, he looked like an uglier Ron Jeremy. And there's this guy where he's just like, hey, I want here, here's what I need. I need some black mans. I need, I need a big fat black man. I need some black cock. Or you out of jail? You are homeless? Or you, or you, or you rich? I don't give a shit. Come on down. He says the name of the street. I just you could piss on me. You could beat me. Beat the shit out of me. I don't fucking care. I need a lot of hard black dick. Yeah. Well, it's like <laughs> you, you, you come on down to Breakside Street, you know, and there you'll be living the dream. You'll be living the dream with me. Oh <laughs> yeah. I mean, it's like you know, look at you me. don't need to pay rent. You got any black friends? They can come in here. They can shit on me. They can. Pull Punch me, beat the fuck. I don't give a shit. <laughs> it's one of those things like, oh my god. Like I went back and watched this video like three times, like nearly dying of laughter. And there's like a couple more around that same area. But this one guy in particular, I was just like dying of fucking laughter. Like, this seems like a fucked up sketch from I don't know, like it's always sunny in Philadelphia. I know they all, those are those things that they almost don't feel real. It's like, is there somebody legitimately like because you know what I mean? There's like there's like a step process to like get that going you know what i mean you got to think like yeah this is actually what i want to do in life this is yeah you know he's laying in bed thinking about this you know day after day it probably doesn't happen just instantaneously it's been like building up for years and then there's a part where it's like okay i need to ask so i'm gonna make a video about it okay well that's that's a little bit personal but i'm gonna i'm gonna do it anyways and then there's a part of like okay i'm not just putting the video up on like a private site i'm gonna put it up on the most public site known to mankind and get it out there. Probably taking a few hits of whatever before he does it. Yeah, exactly. It's like, if that guy has any regular job where he's out in public, I can't imagine him being still hired there. Yeah, yeah. That's one of those things right there with... He's probably one of those goddamn, like, people that's on welfare, like, living in, like, one of those, like, government houses and so on, not paying a dime. I bet you that's what he is. That's the only type of person I feel that would... It sounds like such like, let me go on a hate radio. But I bet you that's, that to me feels like the only type of people that would make that kind of decision. Because no working person, I think, would make that decision. You know what I mean? That comes from somebody who's got nothing fucking better to do. They've had so much free time their entire life that they start to get through these weird ideas. Yeah, I think that's somebody at that, probably at the end of the rope. That's somebody that our goddamn tax dollars are paying for. Our, da- our tax dollars are paying for this guy to do this. Think about that now. <laughs> Yeah, I don't really want to think about that, but even though I'm the one that brought it up, unfortunately, <laughs> but it's one of those things where now that when you bring it up, it makes me have to look in at it and kind of like, oh, this is kind of sad. When at the first glance, it was just this, it's so fucked up. Now I'm looking, thinking about it, like, oh yeah, well, like what gets you to that point? That's what I want to know. Clearly, a lot of disappointment. Like, probably a similar situation. The guy we came up with a story, we came up with the uh, film guy, but yeah. Oh yeah, it's one of those ones. But it's like think about that—that that guy's not working at Subway because obviously somebody that comes in the Subway is gonna be like, is gonna recognize that guy now. I feel like somebody like that would be like, "Can I get a foot long?" Like, <laughs> I'll give you a foot long. <laughs> like, hey, come in the back. Right. He just says, like, "It's okay, his own okay. weird sense Tom, of humor." You need to calm him. down. You are in a working environment. It'd be like, eh, whatever, Adi. Like, That's not my name. Like it is now. Yeah. It's all do. It's all do. I'll do you in the boohoo. <laughs> like, oh god. Like, why are we hired? We this talked guy? about this. 
We the government said he needed a job, and I'm doing the American thing to keep him around. You know, it's that or your goddamn tax dollars pay for him to sit at home. What do you want? You're like, oh, this guy is very patriotic. I feel this this, this uh, <laughs> store manager or whatever, this is the guy I feel most bad for because he's got to take shit from guys like, you ain't a real American? Like, no, but I'm actually doing the American thing by actually keep maintaining a fucking job. So what do you want? Yeah. Yeah, that's, that's I mean, this, this guy's doing the American dream. He's like, so, yeah, I had to put up, there was a government guy came by. It's like, well, you see here, um, what would what, what, we name this guy? I forgot we named this guy. Adu? No, not Adu, the other guy, the creepy Mario guy. Oh, we didn't give him a set name. We were jam- bouncing back and forth between Clarence and Clark. Let's call him Clarence. He sounds like a Clarence. Clarence. Okay, well, you see here, Clarence has a little bit of disorders. So, um, yeah, we're trying to, you know, get him in a program so he can get back, get back on his feet and get a job, you know. He was caught the other day on a YouTube video. <laughs> be like, you know, be one of those kind of like, somebody you would see like in a Beavis and Butthead slash King of the Hill kind of thing. Just some like, some government worker who's just really not helping anything, but they think they are. It's like, we and all that, have disabilities here, Hank. Like the that episode? Yeah, like that episode where he's like trying to go on the sun. Like, oh, god damn, beat my boy. Help my boy. Wait, which one? That's the one where I think there's that might even be like the first episode where there's that there's that that guy who comes in. I can't remember what Hank calls him, but he's trying to think that like Hank's not a good father or whatnot, and trying to get Bobby like out of there. I don't know. No, I never saw that one. I'm thinking of the one where there's like some gov- shitty government worker who like the guy is like he's an addict to marijuana, Hank. He's a victim. And you were prohibiting that. And just, I am a victim too. He has like some kind of weird thumb brace or some shit. Like oh, that. that's the one where they hire that guy and Hank. Like Hank literally like turns down like this female that's like perfect candidate, but he's like, oh, she's too hot. I uh, can't hire her. And then he hires this guy because he's like the guy's like, oh yeah, I like the Cowboys. All right, all right. I almost want to say that guy's even played by Matthew McConaughey or something like that. <laughs> Something like one of those weird like things, but then it's like turns out the guy's just a horrible drug addict. <laughs> He's just going to the office every other day and just getting high, can't fucking work, and then can't at the work, very doesn't show up on time. Then like you know the very end, he ends up hiring that one hot lady who is totally qualified, and she squeezes Hank's ass as soon as she's fucking hired. <laughs> <laughs> like yeah. like pe- then it literally ends with like Peggy's here, and she looks like she's in a rage. Oh credits. <laughs> no. Yeah, that one. But that, that's almost like those kind of people that like, yeah, it's like they're they're trying to do something good, but it's like it's really not helping the cause of everybody else around them. It's like to try to help one person, you're going to make like 30 other people have to really suffer. I think there's a way to get those kind of people help, but I think sometimes people are a little blind to it. Like I think sometimes people are like... <laughs> I'll, I'll be honest. There is like that's that's what you asked. Like, you know, yes, there was a time when we, there was a way to help these people. We called them concentration camps. <laughs> we were solving the world's problems, and you took it all away from us. I wasn't taking it there. You know? <laughs> no, you know, like you know. For instance, San Francisco has a major, major homeless population. It's because they just I let them like the... run around there like freely. Like, oh, they're, you know, they're like wild animals. They're cute. They're you're cuddly. Don't I mean? Don't get but too the close people to who's... them. The people who say that, though, aren't the ones that live in that area. <laughs> no, that, they're the people the that thing. live in, like, Pleasanton on, like, the fourth-story building of an apartment looking over where it's be. Oh, my gosh. They're like, oh, I, I can see San Can't Francisco from happened. my apartment. So, of course, I live there. Yeah. It's got to be a fucking high-ass from the, yeah, <laughs> living like in a high-ass high apartment mountain. be a seat from Pleasanton. <laughs> it's like, yes, well, you know, when I float up in my blimp above my apartment. Not like there's anybody in Pleasant who's gonna fucking blip above their apartment, but still. It has my name across it. It says Jenkins. L- L- Pleasanton and Danville and all those towns, those are literally the places where it's like, yeah, you know, when, you, when you're in, like, another state or something like that, you're like, yes, yeah, so I live in San Francisco, and, you know, I'm quite, actually, educated and awesome and so on. But then it's like, when you meet somebody in California, it's like, no, you don't. You live in fucking Pleasanton. That's just a shitty town <laughs> with shitty people. I'm just gonna say it. People aren't very friendly there, and it's kind of shitty. I mean, yeah, they got a couple interesting stores, but fuck it. It's not that great of a town. The only thing kind of cool about well, it, truly- it's got the nuclear test thing on the... Not, it's not even in Pleasanton, but the town right next to it. Livermore. It's just really bougie. There's just a lot of just... 
it's just fancy shops and fancy apartments, and then you get on the BART and go to San Francisco from there. That's what it's kind of like. And well, you know what I think it is too. It's it's you know when people explain actors and they go, the best actors ever are the people that are at like the starting level or at the top of their game. It's the people that are in the middle who think they're kind of like awesome shit, but they're not really yet. That's almost like what Pleasanton is. Pleasanton's almost like the thing like they think that they're these awesome people doing like awesome things, like, but they're really not. You know what I mean? They're not in the low end spectrum where they're like, you know, like a poor person who's like very humble and like giving and so on. They're like at this weird point. Yeah, it, it, it's it's a weird personality thing. It's like if anybody ever wants to see towns that just look carbon copied and terrible, like go to the, like the outside areas, Bay Area section. Yeah, there's a lot of kind of just well, a lot of that, te- a lot of those towns outside of like you know, Silicon Valley and all that. A lot of them are just kind of like, all right, look, here is some apartment complexes, here's a couple of shopping centers, or here's some, you know, paste and copied, like, um, suburban neighborhoods, and now, uh, or, and that now just, uh, hop on the BART, go to your job, come back, and then, you know, every so often you get to go on, like, a trip to Tahiti or whatever. Well, yeah, they're, t- they're totally the areas that are just made for, like, they're, like, as corporate as can be, like, try to find, literally, a mom-and-pop business there. It's practically impossible and it's just made for people to work, get money, spend money, and repeat the process. It is, t- it is literally almost like a factory made to get, like, tax revenue. That is for that, like, that sounds like some, like, government conspiracy thing. Like, they're literally making these towns, man, like, to be, you work, you spend your money, and now the government just gets that money back, and then you die, and you just eat that fucking McDonald's, and you buy that Bentley, because fuck you. <laughs> feel like old hippie man complaining like you know what man let me tell you <laughs> to bring it back to uh to bring it to mike judge you know from like king of the hill for a second it's almost kind of like the very town like office space takes place in oh yeah that, that's totally what those towns are because i remember like they're complaining they're like oh you gotta like put why don't you put it like new york or something like that or san francisco and have to be all about stock guys it's like no it's got to be about like literally living in those boring towns that are literally built just for you to work and spend money. There's also, there's that town that's below San Francisco. It's like, or it's about two or three towns below San Francisco. And it's a little bit nicer, I guess, because you are on the coast. But that town reminded me, like, because it's kind of small. God, I'm trying to blank on what the fuck it's called. It starts with, like, a B. Pacifica? No, it starts with, like, a B or something like that. Um, It's like, you go to, like, the Candlestick Stadium, and then you go about one more town below that. Mm. But, um, that town... Burling game, or...? No, that's not it. But, um... That town right there was like, it was small, but like, it was literally like, there was just these big fat office buildings that were there. And then there was like an expensive ass shopping center. And that's all there was. I mean, like when I say expensive ass, there was like the Lexus dealership there. There was like the Max Muscle. There was like the jewelry stores. It was literally made for guys to go there and work all week long and then just buy a bunch of shit that they really probably don't need. And then go back to working again and just keep spending money. There's probably like a Tesla dealership there now and so on. Yeah, you know, not saying yeah, not yeah. saying against a Tesla car, but you we, we all know that that's used to like you know stimulate the economy. Uh huh. Well, right now Elon Musk is still like they're still trying to legitimize le- legitimize yeah legitimize the Tesla. They're still trying to do that, but mm-hmm. you know I think he'll pull through. The guy seems like hopefully hopefully he doesn't end up like end up being like I mean he's got to be a little crazy to some extent, but hopefully he doesn't end up being one of these like full on full blown nutcases like Lex Luthor. He goes full on that. Yeah. And he's like, you know what I'm gonna do? I'm gonna flood, I'm gonna flood the side of California, and then I have all this property. I'm like, you know, East California, and then I'll have beachfront property, and Tesla will be able to strive. It's like, yeah, but a lot of your stuff's also on there. He's like, yeah, it's a sacrifice worth doing. Damn it! They're just, they're like, the whole world is like, you know, should we let Elon Musk do this? Like, well, he did get us out of a depression, and he did just save us from World War Three. So let him have this. I like it's like, he's like, yes, I'll take credit for all those. <laughs> It's almost like he's working with Dr. Evil or something like that. Oh, speaking of not Dr. Evil, but uh, we just talk, we just mentioned this a second ago. I mentioned this to you yesterday. Uh, apparently, they're talking about trying to get um, Jim Carrey to play Robotnik in the Sonic movie. I know. I saw that a couple weeks ago when that popped up, and I was like, you know, that could be kind of cool. It depends how they do it. Like, it could be pure awesome, or it could be just kind of goofy, but... You know what I'm actually kind of hoping for? Is it a CG movie? Like, if it's a CG one... Maybe. No, it's 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 a hybrid movie. Okay. Well, because, you know what I mean? Like, you know, when I, when I think Dr. Robotnik, I think round. 
And when I think Jim Carrey, I think like very tall and skinny. But I still think that could work. I feel I like he s- could act his way into that role. Well, I think it's going to be one of a couple things. And here's me just just speculating. And if it doesn't do one of these things, I'm not mad or nothing. I'm just speculating. I could see it doing some shit where you know what? I'm just trying to think of like you know trying to do like somebody trying to do, do a, comp- a contemporary script. I could see like Robotnik being some kind of like Steve Jobs like type. Mm-hmm. And have him playing kind of like a Steve Jobs like character, something like that. And then you find out that that's like a decoy, and this is the real version of him. And you get Jim Carrey later, like in a fat suit, like on a breathing respirator or some shit like that. Yeah, there's just almost like there's like sort of the prettier looking guy who's like the face of the company, but then the real ones like that. That'd be kind of a cool way to go about it. That almost sounds a little just too complicated for the for like the average like screenwriter to put together for probably a CG movie or uh, whatever. Oh, well, it's not going to be a CG. Well, Sonic it's going to be, but. Sonic will be CG, yeah, but no, they they gave like a brief like synopsis of what it's about, and it's one of those things like I'm not one of those guys. Even if it ends up being shitty, I'm not going to be super angry or anything because we're getting a Sonic you know, movie. You know what I mean? Like, why complain? Well, my thing is like what I heard and what it's going to be about is it's like Sonic's more or less a juvenile delinquent in little middle of nowhere in a little rural, rural town. Well, and like wearing he... a baseball cap, like sm- like smoking crack, and being like, "Yeah, whatever." <laughs> How do you think I get my speed? <laughs> yeah, exactly. You know, the tails is just doing heroin. Like Sonic, I'm so fucking sad. So fuck, shut the fuck up, tails. Life is shit. Get used to it. Let's go smash some robots. He just literally like just smacks tails around. Like, yeah, like you know, what? you're gonna come with me. You're gonna use your nerd, sh- your new nerd smarts, and you're gonna make me a fucking gun. But Sonic, shut the fuck up, Tails. And then, oh. and then, fucking Knuckles, just this alcoholic guy who's just always like punching people and getting in the bar fights and stuff. Just make like it like this weird movie about it's all about it's all about addiction, man. That's what the Sonic movie's gonna be about. It's about a guy who's on speed, a guy who's on heroin, and a guy who's just a raging alcoholic and how they have to deal with life. It's all about what if it's one of those things like you could be the fastest thing alive, but you can't outrun your problems. <laughs> Exactly. And then it turns out like Dr. Robotnik's really just like, it's like, we need to get him to the clinic. Well, who's, who's running it? Oh, Dr. Robotnik. <laughs> he, he's like, what's got you hooked? And that's what Dr. Robotnik does. He brings in drug addicts and so on and turns them into robots for his bidding. Dude. <laughs> yeah. Why not? Well, brought, Let's do like, it. We brought a social issue back. You know, like just like all those hobos on the streets of San Francisco that really like just need to be captured like fucking wild Pokemon and like brought somewhere. <laughs> <laughs> you know like i don't know the middle of the fucking ocean or something i don't know where the fuck you're gonna take them but shit put, <laughs> put them on the moon and have them like fucking fight it out up there for like dominance like almost thunderdome stuff. Yeah, we got hobo island for you <laughs> hobo island let me scare that's not like the scariest it's just a bunch of literally it'd be like fucking like hanging out like in new jersey on like a fucking trash pile probably but still <laughs> island. no but like um no what they literally said it's about is uh that's a good job of hobos, though, is sorting trash. You know what I mean? They're already dirty. Sorting like, tra- just fucking have them up there sorting trash and shit. Oh, uh, like, just trying to think of, like, you know, just like, all right, like, uh, well, no, there's that documentary, uh, Wild Wild Country, and at some point when they, like, you know, we're gonna, they're, they're, they're trying to, like, um, they're trying to rig votes to make it so they can be, like, they can establish more of a, uh, I don't remember what, what it was exactly, but they're trying, they're this cult that was spreading across Oregon and they're trying to more or less take over this town and they recruited a bunch of hobos just starting to grab hobos off the streets. <laughs> we're trying to You're use just them. You're going to war, boy. Not even, kind of. Like they said like, look, we'll give you a place, we'll give you a peace, we'll give you a purpose and we're going to, you know, just give you a, you get like three square meals a day, three beers and you're just going to help you be part of a family, part of a community. It all sounds good on paper, but then, you know, they just start grabbing random people. And at some point, they showed one guy, he says, like, no, nah, man, I, the, you know, just some guy, like, eyes, like, really not focusing in on one thing in particular, just kind of going all over the place. Like, no, nah, man, no, nah, man, it's all it's all a little queer there. Or what do you mean? They like to hug. I ain't trusting that <laughs> shit. <laughs> so, uh... But no, they. But then they end up. You find out they're actually drugging the beer to try and make it more docile. That still didn't happen though, because a lot there there'd be those that actually were trying to help and trying to make something move forward. But then there are those that actually, th- there are those who are just actually like you know I don't give a fuck, man, fuck you. You know they just start some shit. So 
and that ultimately started off nice, but then kind of backfired. And then they, since they're trying to swing the vote, and they knew they're being kind of malicious about it. They didn't let them vote. They uh, kind of blocked off the voting polls of those guys. So yeah. <laughs> Yeah, that that you know that, that's a tough task in itself. I mean, you almost have to give those guys slight credit for just even trying, even if they're like using it as a weapon. But still, I don't know. Really, what they should do? It's like you know, like the Isle Dog movies. They should just capture all the hobos and just like Isle of Hobos and just <laughs> fucking like cages that just have this like you know crane going across. You know, like a gondola. Like no, 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 no. They're just like fucking sitting in there, like da 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 da, and it just drops them off, and they're down there just like, what is going on here? Oh, you got the hobo flu. Oh, oh, I do? Oh, that's fucking weird. <laughs> Shit, I was just on the street a second ago, and then all of a sudden, now I'm on, like, Trash Island. What the hell happened? I got, they, I, they're I very, got they have that very... Like a Pokemon. Like, I tried running away, they threw a rock at me, and then threw a ball, and I, uh, this is the last thing I saw. They have that very dry Wes Anderson conversation. <laughs> yeah. Like, way more reserved. <laughs> exactly, just the Isle of Hobos. But that, that was Claymation. I mean, I already see that movie, but Claymation, that would definitely sell me. Did you see that movie? I saw it, yeah. But yeah. I'm saying if that movie was, if the Isle of Hobos was Claymation, I'd definitely see that Shit, one. Shit, I'd see if it was live action. It was just like, that just I'd sounds... see if it was live action, too. I just think Claymation looked creepy. I thought the dogs looked pretty creepy, but I still liked it. No, I just like the look. I like the look of it because it looks completely different than anything else. I know, obviously, that turned a lot of people off, but still. like For all the people that turned off, there's people like us that are like, dude, that looks fucking awesome. At the same time, that movie, it was since it was, um, I assumed it was a kid's movie. Then seeing it was PG-13, it's like, oh, shit, they're not making a kid's movie. Cool. I love that people complain, though. They're like, oh, my God. Or, like, there's, like, they're like, it's, they're using Japanese people in there and so on. But, like, they don't really have, like, a, like, why are they Japanese? It's like, did you fucking watch the movie? It's a samurai movie. Like, that's what that movie is. It's samurai with dogs. How fucking awesome is that? I think that's the other reason why I like that movie so much. <laughs> It was totally a samurai story, but it doesn't have, like, sword fighting and shit, I guess. If the, let, me, let me pull that back real quick before you think it's a bunch of dogs, like, living on an island, like, is, like, ex-Ronin dogs, because that sounds almost cool in itself, but the storytelling well, the style of, is, like, samurai style. Well, the idea of, because, you know, there's that whole thing where samurai were the top class, and all of a sudden they were disgraced, and they no longer had a purpose once, I think, once the, the American Meiji showed up. Era. Well, I think once the Meiji era rolled in, maybe I'm wrong. I think it was Meiji, maybe it was something else. But um, it was the it was when the Americans started to show up to the fucking there and kind of converted like the I don't know Tokyo and so on like that. Be like, oh, you don't need this anymore. Come on, guns, America, freedom. Here, have a beer, damn it. Try on these blue jeans. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Don't they look good on you? Yeah, look, look at your ass in that. You look, you look, you look fucking sexy. I mean, I'm not, I'm not gay or nothing, but just saying it. Yeah, come on, just come like, on, hero. Yeah. <laughs> Just slaps it. Yeah, doesn't it feel good? <laughs> yeah, come on. Come on, good game, buddy. Good game. It just keeps going No, Nobu, get over here. Try these on. <laughs> Be like, oh my god, these American guys are kind of cool. He's like, here, have a baseball. You know, you'll love baseball. Here, have a fishing pole. You know what I mean? You got a beer, you got a baseball, you got a fish. God damn it. God damn, you guys look good. Shit. <laughs> Hope we don't have to come back here and bomb you one of these days, but god damn, you guys look good. <laughs> Here, you're the edgy one. Put this baseball around the back. back oh, yeah, look yeah. at him. Oh, hey, look at him. He's a, he's a rebel. Ooh, look at him. Don't mess with him. <laughs> he's tough. <laughs> he's like ex Ronin. <laughs> like, um, but um, the whole thing with that is because that movie, it was like, okay, because dogs were at one point in charge and then they weren't, and now they're all banished to this corner, and it's about, like, you know, these dogs who are part of this upper class now seeking redemption so in that like i kind of picked up on the samurai aspect yeah it, well to me it just felt like extraordinarily like a samurai it's like oh wes anderson just wanted to really make a samurai movie but also like make dogs i'm like that's so fucking awesome but i think it's just mm -hmm. i think like once again that always comes from people complaining who aren't like actually there you know what i mean you didn't watch the movie of course you're complaining you know I imagine whenever there's some weird little social outrage, it's somebody who has, like, an Aussie man des oh, display of every, like, social media thing going on, and they're just looking for some stupid little thing. Like, oh, it's a white girl in a Chinese dress! <laughs> like, oh, it was, uh, you know, just, like, things they don't even really entirely know the whole system on. Like, you know, like, Tom going back to Tom Segura for a second, like, he made a joke about, like, he I think he made a joke about the word retarded. And then people took a line from his, the trailer of his show and took that out of context. Like, did you, did you actually watch the special? Well, no, but I saw the trailer. Yeah, well, that's not what I'm talking about in the trailer. That's that's out of context. Watch 
the show and get back to me. And then he said a bunch of people like, oh, yeah, that was pretty funny. I do see what you're trying to say now. Okay. Yeah. I think that this, once again, it's just a bunch of people that have too much free time on their hands, probably don't really work a job, probably got one of those government houses, you know, no different than that fucking Mario guy out there, (laughs) fucking Clarence, working at Subway, fucking looking for black dudes, you know, because he's just got nothing better to do. You know, that's that's the same thing. Probably right next to that guy's fucking apartment is somebody, like, fucking flipping through headlines on the internet and then, like, bitching about it online. Yeah. I feel like it's usually the same kind of, uh, same kind of person. I don't know. I think it's one of those people who doesn't really even have, like, a real... I honestly feel like a lot of those people can kind of flip-flop sides in either way. Like, do you know who, um, Anita Zarkeesian is? No. Does he work at Subway? No, it's a lady. Oh. Uh, Nita Zarkeesian. Not that I know of. Uh, I won't go into her too much, but she's like the super feminist blogger, vlogger about talking about sexism and video games and this and that. There's See, that was probably the most up. offensive comment I could have just gave to her is before even knowing who she was, I say, does she work at Subway? And then she's, you know, she's a super... Because that's feminist. a classist shit. Like, <gasps> me work at Subway? Well, yeah, she'd be like, I am so rich. I would never work there with those heathens. You know, she'd probably be one of those people. She probably fucking probably lives in Pleasanton and shit. Thinks she's so special. She sucks. Anyway, um... I love hating I on saw- someone when you have no idea who they really are. It's like, that's... There's almost that, like, fine line before you really know somebody. You can just kind of go, like, fuck that person. <laughs> I'll say this. I've seen some... I see. I watched a couple of her videos, and there's some aspects where she made a couple of good points. But she also takes those points out of context. And she does not do debates. She does not talk back with the audience. She just literally says, here's how I feel, and this is why you should change. But does not talk to anybody about it. So it's just this kind of, like... Do what I say. I don't have to do what you say. And it's just this thing like, well, you're not really living. And she, she's presented things out of context and has blatantly lied in some of her videos. So it's one of those things I can't really take her that seriously. But anyway, you get those P guys who uh, who see someone like her. Like, well, I want to be progressive. I want to be oh, – I, I want to look smart. I want to I wanna be accepted by the ladies. So they start – you know, I, I remember just – I don't know how I came across it. But I came across some video – of some guy trying to point out, like, you know, sexism in video games. And it was just, like, some, he only, he, you know, just, what was it? He says, like, here is a new game that's on Steam. It's a, sci- it's a science fiction fantasy game. It's a point-and-click adventure called whatever. And all the characters are very basic, simple shapes. Like, mm-hmm. very, like, over, over, um... How do I put it? Like, you know, if there was, like, a fat character, he was very round. If there was, like, a girl character, she was, like, a thin triangle because you know the dress or whatever she's like i will i'm i will try to be boycott this game because it presents a negative stereotype the girl should remain thin like this character right here and i will be sending this to anita sarkeesian for approval and uh, and i i hope that i ex- receive acceptance from someone and like from that i was like you know what like a hot chick with a pair with a massive with a massive pair of tits could come out and be like, you know what I don't like? Mexicans. That guy just vividly just switched his t- tune automatically. Like, yeah, why? Well, here's something I saw in a video game that I don't like. I honestly feel like a lot of these people they don't really have a strong cause. I feel like they just want to be accepted by somebody. Yeah, I think that's sort of what it is, and that, that's always like that one too. It's just like if you don't like the game, don't fucking play it. You know what I mean? I just I feel anybody should be able to do whatever they want. If they just want to, if somebody's like, I want to make a video game where it's just a bunch of like hot fat chicks running around like let them do it like fuck if that's what they want to make like who are you to fucking decide this is how you decide you buy it if you want to see it and if you don't want to see it you buy a different person's game because we're not going to buy everybody's game anyways you know what i mean there's only you can only get Mm -hmm. so many games and so many movies and so many comics just let people do what they want to do like i hate the idea that people come in and try to tell other people like what they can and can't do with their own content you know what i mean like who the fuck cares? If somebody really wanted to make something that was racist, like, just let them make it. It's like, that's their freedom of choice. Like, that's that's what they get to do, you know? You don't have to buy it, you know what I mean? You don't have to like it. If they're going to do it, they're going to do it, you know what I mean? If you tell them they can't do it, they're only going to become a worse person as time goes on. If you kind of just, like, accept them, they'll probably become a better person as time comes on. They'll be like, oh, you know what? I thought that way before, but maybe I'm changing kind of now. I, You know what I mean? I think this, like, because the passive aggressiveness just, like, only makes people more aggressive in general, and I just think you just gotta calm back and just let people do and say and kind of like just have a good time as long as it's not like being serious and it doesn't turn into like you know like 
something really bad, that's like the time you got to kind of watch out for it. But if it, if they're just doing it like it's storytelling, you know, or, you know, I mean, because people just get so weird nowadays where it's like, you know, in real life, you know, there is people that are bad people. In real life, there is people that do stupid things. In real life, there is people that are lazy and so on like that. Like, why can't we represent that in storytelling? Mm-hmm. Well, it's also one of those things I hear people get mad at it. Like, they'll be mad that something's in a movie. And I can't think of the example off the top of my head. But like, you realize that that wasn't meant to be presented as a good thing. Yeah. You realize that was meant to be the bad guy's perspective. Well, it's a perfect example. If you actually wrote just people as they really were, you would have the most offensive movie known to mankind. If you really just like wrote people, like, you know, you just went around town and just picked random people out and just, you know, people from all races, all sectors and so on, but you put them together as they really are, you'd have the most offensive movie known to mankind because real life is extremely offensive. And I don't know why people wanted to be so sugarcoated when it comes to storytelling because that's just, you know what I mean? I don't know. It just bothers me, especially like villains. Like I think villains should be able to say and do whatever the fuck they want because they're villains. You know what I mean? They're rebels. Mm-hmm. They're breaking the rules. You know what I mean? That That's who they are. You know, I mean, like, just let it be. Or just let people, you know what I mean? Like, like let even, like, heroes, they don't have to be perfect. You know what I mean? Not everybody's got to have, you know, they, they can have some flaws. That's just how, that's just how life is. I, I don't know what it is. I think, I think there's just too many people out there that just want, they want, like, the world to be, like, soft and cuddly and perfect and, like, no violence and no anger and no so on. And it's just, these are the people we just need to drop in the Thunderdome and just be like, if you survive... Well, you can keep going on, but if you don't, fuck you. Well, it's the kind of people who say, like, I will never let my child play another Mario game. Well, yeah. Why is that? Because oh, it's, it's a man saving a princess, which is such an outdated notion. And he's smashing Italians that they refer to as Goombas. And, you know, well, I've, I've even heard that, too, where people say, like, Mario's too violent because it's just involved violence of, like, smashing things. It's like... Yeah. Well, it's Go yeah. Fuck it's like, that, that's people. It's like okay, you know that Thanos idea. Like I, Thanos, I got the perfect <laughs> way we can kind of do this without doing a random equation. Like fuck the random equation. Let's just pick these people and just get rid of them. Come on, Thanos. You're the man, Thanos. Look at man, Thanos is a, he's a well built man. You could trust a guy like that. Probably works out every day. <laughs> Start with people that have uh, Yelp accounts. Yeah, start with anybody that, start with people... Not Yelp business owners, I mean Yelp people, uh, Yelp accounts business owners, I mean Yelp accounts as in, just like, well, I went to some of the Applebee's the other day, and I must say, I was very disappointed in their habanero teriyaki wings. Yeah, you start with that, well you just start with all the people that just spread negativity but don't bring any positivity back, you know what I mean? Because that's the thing, is generally anybody who's just going on like hate rants, I bet you doesn't do anything for us. You know what I mean? They're not paying taxes. They're probably not, you know, putting out a cause or starting a business or, you know, having something that provides a charity or anything like that. They're probably just out there just yelling and, you know, protesting and getting the fucking way of people that actually do have to work. Those are the people. Any, I feel just get, fucking get rid of those. You know what I mean? I know that's not, this sounds like almost a start. Like this is almost like this is like what a powwow was like in 1935 and fucking like Nazi Germany. But still, <laughs> you know what fucking pisses me off? Getting up on a table of a beer hall. Like, yeah, yeah, fuck yeah, bro. Yeah, you know those guys that aren't paying fucking taxes? Fuck them. You know who else pissed me off? Goddamn Americans. Took away all our freedom from fucking World War One. Yeah, fucking assholes. We were just trying to get more freedom, damn it. You know what? For 300 years, we never had freedom. It's our fucking time. That, that's what happens. <laughs> well, not to be not construed as that, but I'll say I do think uh, most of the people that are finding every stupid little thing to complain about I think most of them are younger people who have not had real exposure to life yet. That doesn't mean they haven't had any, you know, hardships or anything. But, I mean, I Mm -hmm. do think there are people who, they're younger people. They're going to, you know, these college, they're going to, like, they're taking, like, you know, college courses. And they're getting these things that few people can actually afford and actually attend. Yeah. So they're getting this view of, like, that's an interesting view, but they don't really have the the life experience to go along with it if that makes any sense well it's equivalent you're you're floating on a cloud above a city and you're making decisions from up there instead of doing it on ground level perfect example of this and this is almost where you can wrap it all up it's green arrow once green arrow lost all of his money i know this is the only way this is the only way it can relate to me is if it's in a comic book form once he lost all his money and he had to live on the street 
th- that then is when he really realized it. Then he understood the people, and then he knew the world. Because when he was rich, of course he could never relate to anybody like that. But the second that he's living on the street, living with people, being able to talk to him and so on, he's able to change. And then he can point out to his buddy Hal Jordan, who just seems like an idiot because he's living in space. You, you man, you think living on a cloud's tough? You're living in space, flying around. Come on, you, you gotta come on down here, and live with everybody. Here's Bob. Here's Jim. You know. They all work regular jobs, unlike your Green Lantern Corps. I'm like, oh, well, you know, the, the ring shows me. Yeah, of course it shows you. Look. It's like, oh, geez, Green Lantern's just getting real pissy and angry now. <laughs> hey, you know, you, you did spend 20 years drunk with women. Like, well, well, you know, it's, it's called learning curve. Don't bring that up, man. You know what I mean? I changed with you. You haven't changed yet. No, you're still flying out of that fucking ring. <laughs> Well, one of my favorite covers is, like, the one in, from that whole run when, like, fucking, where fucking <laughs> Green Arrow has, like, the war headpiece, Native American war headpiece. He's just like, you're going to pay for your sins against the Red Man or whatever. <laughs> yeah, that's, like, almost where I was going a little bit too far. Like, at that time period, nobody was thinking too much of it. It's like, oh, yeah, I'm, I'm helping out my Indian buddy. But that was the point where it's just, like... <laughs> Now, now he was like Green Green Arrow was totally White Knight in that one. Yeah, <laughs> like that 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 image just I, I re- actually I want a poster of the one where like oh no my Ward Speedy is a junkie. <laughs> oh yeah, that's always a great cover too. I want a poster of that. I want a fucking poster of that. But good times. Well, we gotta wrap this up quick because gotta go. Gotta go. I call it watching audio. That's what it feels more like, you know. When you go, done making audio. Time to go watch it. Yeah, making audio and then going to go watch audio and make sure it doesn't something go wrong with it. Watching audio and flipping switches like a monkey on for like lighting. <laughs> yeah. But <laughs> other than that, though, uh, check out oldmanorange.com dot com for more podcasts, cartoons, comics, you know, videos, and more. Till then, I'm Spencer Scott Holmes, and I'm Ryan Dunnigan. And we'll see you some other time. Later, folks. Thanks again for listening to the Old Man Orange podcast. Be sure to check out oldmanorange.com for more podcasts, comics, animations, videos, and a whole lot more. You can easily support the show by buying something from one of our Amazon links on the website or in the show's description itself. doesn't cost you a penny, but every single thing you buy from there just by using that link to take you to Amazon helps us out a bit. You can also really help the show out, though, by spreading the word the good old-fashioned way and rate and review us on all the sites that you find this podcast. Anything from iTunes to Podbean to Newgrounds, YouTube, you name it, any little bit helps. Give a sub and share it to your friends, family, any jamoke you see out on the street. You let them know about Old Man Orange Podcast. Be sure to check out the Old Man Orange comic book, Pizza Boys, on both Amazon and Comixology. Till then... We'll see you some other time.